Hi, Norman with iSafeTractors.com. Welcome to episode two of how to restore your old garden tractor. In this video, I'm going to be pulling off the sheet metal, some of the fender parts of this Ford 120, and get it ready for paint. There are many ways to complete a garden tractor restoration paint job. In this video though, I'm going to talk about how to do it yourself at home using only an angle grinder, sandpaper, and spray cans. Let's begin with the paint removal. Now it's best to paint all of the sheet metal, at least on the outsides, down on its bare metal. So in order to remove all the existing paint, you can either use a sandblaster if you have one, or you can use an angle grinder. I actually prefer using an angle grinder and the disc I use are these poly discs right here. It's like a hard plastic material, a lot of different companies make them and they are fantastic at removing paint without damaging your sheet metal. Uh, I've seen some people and I myself have used a flap disc before with a fine grit sand uh, paper head and they work great at removing metal at paint but they're also great at removing metal if you push too hard. But these poly discs are great. Uh, they will remove all the paint really quickly and not damage the metal underneath. It's also important to have some uh, fine grit sandpaper. This is a little assortment of wet or dry sandpaper in the 220, 320, and 400 grits. Uh, these are great for smoothing out your metal after you use the angle grinder. Uh, clean up any little tiny scratches, get anything that you missed, or any hard to reach spots with this kind of sandpaper. Now for the paint. These are the paints that I'm using for this Ford 120. I'm using a filler primer. I'm using a crystal clear clear coat enamel. I'm using a high gloss enamels for the colors too. I'm using gloss white and sail blue for this project. When I paint, I'm going to typically put three coats of primer on, three coats of the color, and then three coats of the clear. Now the problem with using spray cans, I mean there are a lot of problems with using spray cans. It is best, if you're going to do a paint job, if you want the absolute best results, it is better to use a spray gun connected to an air compressor. Uh, but if you don't have those or if you're limited on budget, you can still get a great paint job with rattle cans, but you have to know a few things going in. The first thing is the propellant used in spray cans is inconsistent. It's terrible actually. Uh, so when you use like this can of white, you're only going to be able to spray about three quarters of the paint in here. Once you start getting to the last quarter of paint that's in this can, the propellant just won't be enough to eject the paint effectively. You'll notice that it'll start kind of sputtering on you uh, and all that stuff and it will mess up your paint job. So when you use a can, you know, only count on using about three quarters of the paint inside. So that'll make it so you have to buy more cans. Uh, so, you know, just know that going on. Also, the tips of them clog. So what I recommend to people is when you spray this spray can of white, only use it once. Even if you only use half of it for a fender, if you put a, let it set overnight, don't use it again. Uh, I've tried to clean out the tips by letting them soak out in uh, mineral spirits or paint thinner, and they never get perfectly clean to get a really nice spray. This is what happens. If you try to use your paint more than once, uh, there'll be like a slight clog and then some of the paint will drip down the side and that could drip onto your paint job uh, and make it very frustrating for you. Here's another example of a can. So I only use these cans once. So when I paint apart, I paint until it's about three quarters empty and then I throw it away. And we can't forget about our safety equipment. These are two different respirators. This respirator here is for keeping dust out of my lungs when I'm using the grinder to remove the paint. And this one is for actual painting. It's important to wear masks when you're doing both the sanding and the painting to uh, prolong your life. So this episode will be focusing mainly on the hood of the tractor. 
It would take too long to show you painting and refinishing everything, so we're just going to stick with the hood in this one. So as you can see, this poly disc on this angle grinder does a great job at removing the paint uh, pretty quickly. Here I am using uh, some fine grit sandpaper just to smooth out the metal before I lay the coat of primer down. And now I've moved the hood inside and I'm just cleaning off uh, all of the extra residue with uh, a cloth. Before I used this dry towel, I sprayed it down with a degreaser and really made sure everything was clean. Now let's get to the painting. For this hood, I'm going to use three coats of the filler primer, followed by three coats of the gloss white, followed by three coats of the clear. Now when I do the primer, I'm going to prepare it, and then I'm going to paint the first coat of primer, wait a few minutes, second coat of primer, wait a few minutes, third coat of primer. And then I'm going to wait between two and four hours for everything to dry enough for me to dry sand the primer. I'm going to take that sandpaper that's behind everything and I'm going to slightly sand off the primer to get it all nice and flat and uniform. After I do that, I'm going to wipe off all the dust off the primer, clean it all up with a tack cloth, and then I'm going to lay three coats of the white paint. I'm going to lay one coat of the paint, wait a few minutes, second coat, wait a few minutes, third coat. And then I'm going to wait a few minutes and then immediately jump into the clear. One coat of clear, wait a few minutes, second coat of clear, wait a few minutes, third coat of clear. And then I'm going to let everything sit for 24 hours. That is the best way to get a really nice workable finish on your tractor. Check it out. Here I am now beginning to put the first coat of primer on this hood. Now the first uh, several video clips in this section here are all being displayed in real time to you. That way you can see the speed and distance of my spray can. It's important to start and stop the spraying of the spray can after you've passed the material. That way when you first push the button on the spray can, if there are any like glops of paint or inconsistencies, it's not sprayed onto the material you're painting and just look at how I'm going at a steady speed, going back and forth, making sure to overlap the previous pass. Now on this first coat of primer, I'm not trying to lay it down really thick. All I'm focusing on is keeping my distance, my angle of spray, and my speed consistent. I'm gonna be following this with two additional coats and that will help make everything fill in nice and smooth. After I lay the third coat of primer, I let everything sit for about two to four hours for it all to dry off. 
I then take a fine 400 grit piece of sandpaper and I sand the primer down smooth. I'm not putting any major force down on the sandpaper. I'm just using the weight of my hand to push down on the sandpaper to uh, flatten everything out. And after you're done sanding, you want to use a dry cloth and just dust off the hood and get rid of all of the extra primer dust that may have been formed due to the sanding. It's important to take your time on the hood. The hood is the most important part of the tractor in terms of looks. The hood draws the eye. The hood gets the least amount of wear. Your legs aren't going near it, so it's going to stay looking nicest the longest. And when you show your friends or when you're driving it around your yard, the hood is kind of the centerpiece of everything. Now that everything is sanded down and dusted off, it's time to start laying the coat of paint. Here I am just laying the first coat down. Now pay extra attention to the way I'm using the spray can. I am beginning the spray before it reaches the hood and I'm stopping the spray after it clears the hood. The reason you want to do this, especially with spray cans, is because spray cans are not very consistent with their nozzles. So if there's any problem in the spray, it's going to happen right when you push the button. And you don't want that inconsistent spray to hit your piece. And it's also important to stop spraying after you've cleared it. That way there's no excessive buildup on the end of the material. And just watch how I'm going. I'm moving at a very consistent speed, moving at a consistent distance from the workpiece, and I'm overlapping each pass. And I'm not laying paint on heavy. I'm using very light coats and I'm going to do it the same way for the next two coats. Now after the first coat of paint, I'm just going to let the paint sit for a few minutes before I paint the second coat. Depending on the temperature, all you have to do is wait uh, three to five minutes and then you can immediately go and apply your second coat and it's the same thing I'm moving at a consistent speed consistent distance finishing and ending the spray before and after the workpiece Now on to the clear coat. I don't wait 24 to 48 hours before I clear coat. I lay the clear coats on right after I lay the color on. All you have to do is wait three to five minutes after your last coat of the color paint, and then you can start laying the first layer of the clear coat. After the first uh, pass of the clear coat, you just wait another three to five minutes, and then you lay your second, and then you do it again for the third coat of clear.
So here is the hood all finished with our three coats of primer, three coats of a high gloss white, and three coats of a clear coat. It came out great. It has a very smooth, uniform, high gloss finish. Uh, there's only very, very little bit of orange peel texture in some parts of the hood, but it's not noticeable past a couple feet. I'm really happy with the way this came out. I'm going to be saving the decals for the very end of the project. I don't like to put the decals on until the tractor is fully assembled. Now I'm going to let this paint cure for a few more days. I'm going to store it and then work on the rest of the tractor. You don't want to try to reinstall fenders at least for a couple days after you paint. Uh, even though the paint dries to the touch and dries enough for you to handle it after about 24 hours, it doesn't reach its full durability for several days, sometimes even a week or two depending on the time of year and the weather outside. Thank you for watching episode 2 of How to Restore Your Old Garden Tractor. If you need high quality aftermarket parts for your vintage Kohler K-Series engines like the Kohler K301 that's on this tractor, please visit our website isavetractors.com. We are the leaders in developing and selling high quality parts for your old small engines. Also, if you want to show your community and your friends that you love to save old iron, please look into purchasing our I Save Tractors hat available on our website for only $14.99. My name is Norman. See you next time.